case estimation and tracking can be used in a ton of different computer vision applications and projects. Let's say that you have a self-driving car, you want to monitor where people are looking, or basically if you want to do some monitoring, tracking in another way, if they're looking at the screen, if they're looking somewhere else where they shouldn't look. So this is a really cool computer vision application and also a small project. We're going to cover everything. We're going to use RoboFlow inference to have a model integrated in there is the L2C. S model, it basically just goes in, do gaze estimation, eye tracking, so it estimates where you're looking, and then it's going to draw an error depending on where your eyes are looking. So I've just opened up the RoboFlow documentation here. In the start, I'm going to create like a whole playlist, whole tutorial covering all the aspects of RoboFlow, how we can set up the whole computer vision pipeline, going from data set, train the models, exporting them, and then using them for inference to have this inference SDK as well, where we can run our models. We have the visualizations, the annotator library with supervision and so on. So we can create full scale computer vision systems with RoboFlow out of the box. We don't need anything else. So right now, if we go inside the documentation, they have start model workflow reference. I have other videos covering those tabs, but right now let's just go inside models. Here you can see some examples how you can run a model from local weights. If you want to predict over a server, could be that you host your model somewhere or host it locally as well. They have a ton of different fine-tuned models directly out of the box. All the YOLO models, YOLO NAS, pre-trained models, and we also have universe models. So if you find some on the RoboFlow universe, you can directly just use those out of the box. No training, no code. It's just a few lines of code. You can have a computer vision model up and running. If you go inside our foundation models. We have all these different ones. So if you want to use clip OCR models, different OCR models, optic detection, grounding dyno, pally gemma, and so on. But we have this case detection, case estimation, or basically just like eye tracking. So we have L2CS net. If you go inside the GitHub repository, we can just see this video where it basically just detects all the human faces and estimates where they're looking and it's very accurate as you're going to see in the results when we run it. It's also very fast so you can just directly use these few lines of code out of the box and you have a full project up and running. You can then integrate into whatever system that you're trying to solve. You can also use it in here to have a pretty nice, nice user pipeline. You set up the pipeline, you specify the model, the architecture, ResNet 50 architecture, you just run it on your camera so this could be a webcam with your stream or whatever and then you just case pipeline step it's going to process every single frame and it will render it with the outputs as well so you can either use it directly in from here but we can also use the RoboFlow inference sdk working the exact same way as all the other models in here so it's very good to be familiar with and i'm going to cover way more in the future how we can run inference with our own custom models how we can build inference pipelines extract the results use them in our own custom applications and projects so right now first of all you need to export your roboflow api key you find that under the settings on the roboflow platform and then we just export the roboflow api key i already did that then we need to go in and pip install inference, inference CLI, and also inference SDK. So we can just open up a terminal, throw that in, pip install it, and then we're good to go. Then we can just copy paste the code into a notebook or basically to our Python script locally, run it on a webcam and take a look at the results. So I'm just going to open up my code editor here. I have the full code, basically just all of it combined. So let's just zoom in and take a look at code go over it line by line first of all we just import the different dependencies frameworks and libraries that we need just open cv numpy and then it will take care of the rest image path roboflow api key distance to object and also height of human face so this will go in you can use this information to make it more robust so i'll probably say 30 so let's do 300 millimeters distance to object i will say i'll probably around half a meter away from the webcam you can specify these, it will take that into account and just make it more robust. Then we need to detect our cases, take our frame from a NumPy array. If we have a video stream, we can just have OpenCV video capture, just load in frame for from the camera. We pass it through our detect case, so it's going to encode the image. It's going to make a post request to our uh, endpoint, so we just have our case detection URL. This is going to spin up a local host. We have case, case detection, we have our API key, so we just have this model deployed locally. You can also deploy it in the cloud or whatever, on your own local cloud or in your own local environment. This is really easy because then we can use 
Docker, we don't have to take into account like dependencies, versions like PyTorch version not matching, Vision, Torch, Torch Vision versions not matching, CUDA versions and all that not matching. You can just deploy this on any operating system, any hardware, and it's just going to run. So this is very important to, to use. So we detect our cases. We basically just get every post request here. We get a response back with our results. So this will just be our predictions that we get back in our response. We return that from this function. Then we can draw our gaze. We're just going to extract the bounding box of our face and then also the error where we're estimating that the person is looking. So it's basically just extracting error length here and then we take the gaze yaw pits position. So it's basically just how is it actually like rotated in the image plane or the position in the image plane, depending on where you are looking around. Then we get an error, so we get a dx, dy. So this is the difference in the x, y position. Let's say that the center is our eye or in the middle of the image. Then we have our dx and we have our dy here in the x axis. We draw an error line, we draw the key points for our face and also the bounding box around our face. That's pretty much it. Then we have our main function, specify zero for our webcam. If you want a video file, you can just specify the path here to the video file. We have a while loop just running until we terminate our program. We read in a frame from our capture, detect cases. So this was the function before that's going to make a request to our server, get the response back. We throw in the frame, we get our cases back. We check if our cases is equal to zero. We're not detecting any cases in our image. We just continue loading in new frames from our video or webcam. Then we extract our gaze. We draw our gaze and then that's pretty much it. Now we can go in and make some modifications depending on the distance to the object and also the height of the face as we saw. So we do some calculations for that. Then the rest is pretty much just visualizations, drawing the circle, doing image show with OpenCV and checking if we hit a cue on a keyboard, it's going to terminate the program. So yeah, you can probably boil this down to 100 lines of code just load in the model, do the detections, throw it through the model, get the results back, do some annotations and visualizations. You can extract all the information, use it for whatever you want in your custom applications and projects, but that's pretty much it. Now we just have the terminal down at the bottom. We just run our Python gaze.py. It will open up the webcam. And now I'm going to pull over the frame. So right now, let's just look around and see how good it is at, at like estimating it. So right now I'm looking down on my screen, very accurate right now. Again, we can run some filtering on top of it. We can run some moving averages and all that to make it more robust and smooth, but this is very good. Looking up here, so that's really awesome as well. Looks like it's doing a pretty good job. Let's just go to the sides. Let's turn it around. The other way. So you can see this is pretty accurate and pretty robust. It might look a bit weird, but uh, but it does a very, very good job of doing this case estimation, even if I'm looking here from the side. Even rotating my head here, still keep track of my eyes, but I'm still looking downwards. So this is very good, very good case eye estimation. You can probably imagine this like in a car, like you probably have a driving systems. If you're falling asleep and so on, if you're looking in the wrong direction, not looking out and the front I might give an alert, but this is pretty awesome. You get the yaw value, you get the pitch value and so on, depending on like where you are in the frame or where you're looking. You can extract this information, use it in your own application and projects. Like this is a very cool project few lines of code it works very good definitely go in check it out test it out let me know if you have any other ideas like how this can be used or if you can build some systems around it for future videos i have this whole playlist where i'm going to cover roboflow all the different features they have a ton of cool tutorials and so on that you can check out as well check it out this is very awesome results as you can see here directly out of the box 100 lines of code i hope you learned a ton hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos until then happy learning